Welcome back to Canada. Today we'll be building and detailing an extremely realistic and functional bus terminal. Finalizing what our modern Union Station will look like and developing along the rail lines east of the station. We do a lot of cool stuff in this episode and a lot of stuff overall. So to keep the video at a reasonable length and the time lapse understandable, I've cut out a lot of the more mundane stuff and done the intersection detailing off camera. I'm really pleased uh, with the reception to the channel in Canada specifically. So thank you for that and uh, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to subscribe or leave a like. And if you want to support the channel even more than you already do, check out my Patreon down below. So I know I said that I'd be doing the train station in this video, but I ended up focusing more on the bus terminal. And I'm planning on actually detailing the station and the platforms which I add in this video in a shorter more specific how-to video, which I hope to release not long after this one. Moving on to what I'm actually doing in this video, I decided to start off by developing east of the station so that I could have a few more buildings so the city starts looking more complete. The rails narrow to only three rails and eventually come side by side with this American bike lane road, which I'll also be using as a seawall throughout parts of the city. So I had to bring the rails up to ground level or else they'd flood from proximity to the bay. I'll get to describing this tunnel I've just built and its purpose when I actually detail it. I added a condo from Toronto that I really like in person, but I'm not really a fan of how it ends up looking where I put it between Bayview Boulevard and the rails. So I replaced it with a smaller building when I opened up the game to do the intersections and the cinematics. I put a surface lot between the building and the rails and am now running a retaining wall alongside it to hide the terrain ruining. I'll cover it all up with some bushes, but the retaining walls always add a crisp, modern feel to it all. I could put graffiti on my retaining walls, but I just don't want to because to be honest it's a lot of work and the handling of the graffiti props is really clunky. I couldn't really fit another building next to the condo from Toronto and the terrain would have made that even more difficult, so I'm just wedging in the first of many waterfront parks which I'll be building in this city. There's not a lot to this one, just some trees lining the edges and then some tables and tree trunks in the middle, and then I placed some tr tree clusters on the edges. I ended up using a park life path, not because it's the best looking path, but because all of the workshop paths don't really handle rough terrain well. And to be honest, I couldn't be asked to put up with that for such a minor part of the city. Across the road from that building, I've placed this office building from Germany that I really like because of how thin it is. And then I've turned it into a procedural object and lowered it to the height of the rails. And then next to it I'll end up doing the same here with some procedural object condos. Of these three buildings here, only the office will remain for the cinematics, as I've replaced the first one and modified the condos further with procedural objects, which I'll be doing a lot in this series to stretch my limited number of condo assets to a realistic amount for a Vancouver style city. Across the rails from that I've made a small park by the station to fill this irregularly shaped block and ensure that there are some gaps in my skyline. Along with creating a sideline towards the station and the condo across the rails, another simple and complicated park I've placed some gazebos and used a tree line to make the park seem as if it opens up to the train station. But as I said this is very simple. And because to be honest, it doesn't really have to be anything more than a very simple part. Now on to what is in my opinion the most impressive build of this episode. Being this tunnel that I made earlier with the vanilla overpass project by Allegro. This tunnel will be bus only and will be the entrance to the bus terminal, which will be at a lower elevation by the station. I've covered the road with asphalt and will make my own markings, starting with this yellow curb in the middle and along the medians. And then before I do the lane dashes, I use my mix of intersection marking tool and decals to detail the intersections east and west of the tunnel road with Bayview Boulevard and Terry Fox Avenue respectively. 
I'm pretty sure this is the only intersection detailing I do in this video, as the rest I end up doing off camera as it is a very tedious yet relaxing process. Regarding road names in this city, I'll have three tenets to road naming. Specific roads like Bayview Avenue or the road with the tunnel, being Terminal Road, will be named after their locations and functions within the city. Roads running north-south or parallel to Lyon Mackenzie Bridge will be named after famous Canadian people, such as Terry Fox, and roads running east-west or perpendicular to the bridge will be named after Commonwealth cities or territories, such as Victoria and Melbourne Avenue. Now I'm just finishing off the tunnel with some signage, and something I'll be doing specifically in this series is every episode I'll be building one city block off camera, and only including a cinematic in the middle of the video to show it to you guys. I'm doing this so that I can A, grow the city a bit faster, and B, ensure that I still have some fun playing Skylines. Here's today's block, which is between Terry Fox Avenue, Bayview Boulevard, Terminal Road, and Melbourne Avenue. It's got some lovely condos with a small plaza and a detailed back lot. And you've also seen here how I changed the other condos along the boulevard. I'm really pleased with this build and how it fits into the city. Moving back to recorded builds, I used procedural objects on this wonderfully versatile asset from what I believe to be Senkcorn's business park pack. And I'm using this asset to make a sort of elevator connecting Terry Fox Avenue to what will become the bus terminal down below. The first step was making an entrance above with one copy of the asset, and then after that I used another copy and stretched it vertically to make up the body of the elevator. And then finally I rotated a version of the top one to serve as my terminal entrance. I'll be making this functional with invisible pads, but I ended up cutting the footage of building those pads because I moved the camera around a lot to ensure that there were no people floating around. With my elevator done, I set about actually building my bus terminal, starting with the roads. I didn't want to make the terminal the full length of the rail, so I instead matched it up to the train station roof. About that roof, I ended up using procedural objects to copy it and make smaller versions to serve as my bus terminal shelter roofs. I cannot stress just how long it took me to make these, and as you can see, it was a lot more effort working with all the vertices to make sure that they actually worked as more than just a super high vertice dense shrunk down version and instead seemed as if they were built off of a similar design. And while they're a bit rough around the edges I'm really proud of how they came out. Having finally made some respectable roofs I quickly made a template of the props which would go under them and fill out my platforms. And I'll show you how to properly and realistically do that for train station platforms in the next video on this channel which will be done on our very own Union Station here in Canada. For this bus terminal I went with some simple benches being the same ones I've used all throughout my station build because consistency is key, a security camera, a bin and some planters with bike racks and flowers which I ended up forgetting to copy. I then used this and put it in all of, the, all of my platforms with the same roof and the same props inside. Having completed my platforms, I placed the building that will serve as the Melbourne Avenue entrance to the station complex. This is a rather large building, especially once I finished stacking them to create the one big building. But, so it will also be serving as the head office for the regional transit authorities, which will oversee the local and regional buses, commuter rails, trams, and the upcoming elevated metro, which maybe I'll do, maybe I won't. Comment down below if you want to see it or if you don't. And here to cover up the terrain ruining by the terminal, I've built this sort of elevated patio that will basically be like the rich person lounge for people with memberships and all that jazz. And with that done, I ended up moving to my personal favorite part of the bus terminal build, wherein I detailed the roads and filtered the traffic such that no left turns were made and the buses would flow freely and quickly through the terminal. I started off with a yellow curb in the middle and then worked on the lane map. The idea is that buses either turn right out of the main road directly into their stop and then go and then go on the road closer to the building all the way to the large loop on the end where they are redirected on their way outside or should their platform be on the opposite side 
they take the middle road all the way to the loop and out after stopping in their stop. I only added crossings in specific spots to ensure that less stops were made because the whole purpose of this terminal and the way I've built it is that everything flows smoothly. After that, the finishing touches were composed of simply adding some Ronix 9 decals to wear the asphalt down a bit, which adds so much to the look that were this a how-to video, I'd call it an essential step. The tire marks denote which turns are made, and the stains and cracks really tie it all together. After that, for the front of the office building, it was just a matter of some bollards and flags, as no one should really be waiting here. For the island by the loop, I added some trees, which are basically the only bit of nature in the Hall Station complex. And then along the edge of the station, I've added three larger bays and used procedural objects to sort of bring them out to give the buses somewhere to stop. And these bays here will serve, essentially, as where the coach buses, like the Greyhounds, were stopped, and would service more intercity routes rather than local transit. Surprisingly enough, the Go Transit logo was really easy to separate, vertice-wise, from the train car prop. And I took full advantage of this and plastered the logo all over the building. The fact that it matches the color scheme is just an absolute plus. While I will be detailing the station platforms in the how-to video, I'll be placing those platforms in this episode. And the platform networks which I found on the workshop were pretty thin, so I had to move my stations closer together, which allowed me to add one more rail. However, before I get to the platforms, I first of all added a way to reach them. As since the station is already sunken, further tunnels to get there wouldn't really make much sense and wouldn't look as cool. So I've used procedural objects to get these station props aligned with my station and added some stairs and an overhead pad. I darken all of these POs to later fit the colors better. Finally, in the penultimate thing we do in this episode, I use these platform networks to extend my platforms to a more realistic length to service the longer trains which uh, I'll be using on my routes. And then finally to bridge the horizontal and vertical gap between the rail and bus terminals, I placed three steps here in a step pattern and then covered it in another train station route, which unfortunately doesn't have glass because it's a procedural object but that's something which at the end of the day I'm content to live with. To wall off the final end of the bus repo and to close off this episode, I placed a parking garage that is linked to the station by the bridges, and to the bus terminal by a building which I PO to the base of today. And that's all for today, kind of a longer episode but I did a lot and I wanted to have the time lapse a bit slower than before. As I've already said, next video will be a how-to guide on detailing station platforms and exteriors. That one isn't going to be very long, maybe five minutes. And then the next episode of Canada will have us plan out the road network for the peninsula north of the station and place a lot of condos. And then if you ever want to catch those, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time in Canada.